Since its very creation, the PM Cares Fund has come under a lot of criticism, with the opposition alleging that it does not promote transparency and its functioning is largely opaque because it doesn't come under the ambit of the RTI, uh, its funds are not scrutinized by the CAG, and there was no need for such a fund in the first place, given that there already exists the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund. Now, I decided to do a comparative analysis between the PM Cares Fund and the PMNRF. I've chosen nine different parameters, and I know that's an odd number, but I've chosen nine different parameters for this comparison, and the information for this has been obtained from the two websites. Here's what I found. Out of those nine parameters, there are only two differences between the two. On seven parameters, the PM Cares Fund and the PMNRF are identical. Let me first take you through the differences. The first difference is the nature of the institution itself. The PM Cares Fund is a public charitable trust that has been registered. On the other hand, the PMNRF is recognized as a trust under the Income Tax Act. So it lacks an additional layer of scrutiny. The next big difference is the management and decision-making process between the two. The PM Cares Fund has the Prime Minister as the ex officio chairman. Um, it also consists of a committee which has the Defence Minister, the Home Minister, the Finance Minister, as well as three other trustees from eminent fields. On the other hand, the PM NRF has the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Finance Minister, the President of the Indian National Congress and a representative from FIKI and from the Tata Group. The inclusion of the President of the Indian National Congress is the most contentious since why should only one political party or any political party for that matter have a stake in the PMNRF? This is a question that the government has repeatedly been asking and this perhaps is the biggest criticism of the PMNRF. Now, that's where the differences actually end between these two. Now, let's have a look at the similarities. As I was saying, on seven different parameters, uh, they are identical in nature. The objectives of both are largely the same, and that is when it comes to assistance and relief for natural and man-made disasters, whether it is cyclones, earthquakes, floods, that's when their assistance and donations are made. When it comes to auditing, both these are not audited by the CAG. They're both audited by private auditors. Both these organizations, both these funds, in fact, do not come under the ambit of the RTI since they are both said to not be public institutions. Both these funds also receive donations from foreign contributors. Both these funds do not have the list of donors. The names of the donors are absent from their website. Donations to both these funds are 100% tax deductible and contributions made by corporates to both these funds also qualify as CSR. So there you have it. There are seven similarities and two differences between these two. There's not much really to choose from. They are as transparent or opaque depending on how you want to look at it as the other. The degree of separation, so to speak, between the two is not really there. So then the question is, should such a fund have been created in the first place instead of fixing the lacunae in the PMNRF? Or is the criticism of the PM Cares entirely unfounded? I'd love to hear what you think about this. Do let me know.